I mentioned this on TikTok and some people had to obviously, you know, internet explain to me that I was wrong. But a thing seems to happen to you when you move to Colorado. What? Because I lived in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. You put a gun to the head of any resident of those three states, they couldn't tell you what the state flag looks like. But here, people are really into the state flag. Why? I don't know. It's on everything. Like businesses use it as their logo. Hold on, I've got to find. I've got to see this. We we came in with two. Um, we two doormats yeah. with the state flag on them came with our house. Everybody has like some kind of merch with the state flag. I now own two t-shirts and a ski hat with the Colorado state flag. I don't ski. <laughs> if something, I think that is what they're doing at the Denver International Airport. I think they're practicing their mind control waves with the state flag thing. Because if you're here long enough, you're like weirdly compelled to have state flag. Sh this is not a, it's not even a very good. It's right. It's like, like I moved here and I'm like, that flag is kind of ugly. I own two shirts and a hat now. This is, this is very, this is. Yeah, th this... something happens to you in this place. And of course, I have two people that were like, well, I've lived in Colorado all my life and I don't have anything. I'm like, that's cool. It's a good story. That's it. That's that. Yeah, I couldn't even tell what that's for. That's generic as food. I'm telling you, that's what they're doing at the food port. It's some MK Ultra night. And this is just the practice phase. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? If if you come out of it being able to murder people with your bare hands, isn't it a good trade off? No, sure it is. No, <laughs> if I could murder people with my mind, that would be a fair trade off. But uh, I'm not ruining my nails. Oh, right. let's let's get the intro. We we have got. I'll I'll say it after the intro because this week. We've got a break. We've got a full on brace yourself. It's been a while. Oh. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? I have changed, the, I've clicked the button to change the shot. Come on. Why aren't you doing it? Come on. You can do it. Switch shots. Oh my fucking god! My software is being shit tonight. Come on, are you, are you gonna do it? Are you gonna fucking? Oh my! There we go. I'm gonna take this opportunity to reset my lighting since it's been <laughs> stupid. Like, are you gonna? Yeah, I'm gonna do it after the thing is done. Ta da! I smart software. Fuck you. God damn it! I are smart computer. Anyway, um, this week is there's a lot of florida not the first one but there's a lot a disproportionate amount how can there be so much they're all dying <laughs> good night everybody and i don't say that as a joke i think it's very sad but how can there be so much florida crazy and they're all dying i don't know all right let's let's get but this one this one actually oh fuck's sake and I, I don't know how this came from washington this oregon portland oregon well portland's a little weird um speaking of i don't <gasps> yes yes newberg <laughs> school staff member wears blackface to work and and when you find it it's not just the blackface if it was just the blackface that would just be you know another day on this another week on this show Oh, someone wore blackface. That's nice. No, 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 no. This, this one, when you find out why, you're going to be even more baffled. I am. No good reason why. No, well, there's no good reason why, but the reason why is, is even is just befuddling. Staff member at Mabel Rush Elementary School in oh. Newburgh showed up to work in blackface on Friday, calling herself Rosa Parks and doing so in protest of a vaccine mandate for all school districts oh, now. Oh, no.
Someone didn't understand the assignment. How do you get to teach elementary school when you didn't graduate elementary school? Fellow staff member at the school who provided initial information on the incident said, Lauren Perfel, a special education assistant, who the school district said would not, it would not name due to being a personal matter, darkened her face with iodine. She did. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not healthy. That's no, that first of all, that's not good for you. And it's not going to wash off. Second, you're not being oppressed because people want you to not die. We, it's literally the opposite. We, we, we have, we have, We have had vaccine mandates in this country. Have you gone to elementary school in America? You had your ass had to get vaccinated. Yeah. Guess what? Have you been part of the did military? Did you want to live in a college? Did you want to live in a college dorm? You had to get a whole new set. Yeah. Uh, part of the U.S. military vaccination. We this they is shoot you, in the military. They shoot you full of shit. They don't even tell you what it is. Right. This they might is, be testing fucking super soldier serum. Th this is not new. This is not going to the back of the bus. This is not a separate water fountain. You're just reactionary. You, you, you will say there's no to anything if it comes from certain people. There's a new thing going around where they're like, don't call me unvaccinated. Call me a pure blood. And I'm like, really? We're just going straight Nazi shit now. Yeah. Um. I don't know if like, you, okay. I, I don't know if you figured if, it, if they figured this out yet, but a pure blood is just a rebrand of inbred. Just saying. Um, important. Remember how blackface been used to misrepresent black communities and do harm. I I just I what the fuck what? And this is Oregon. The fuck yeah. do you know about segregation is South? Seriously. The fuck do you know about how shit's been down here? Shut the fuck up. I'm just like Rosa Parks because they're forcing me not to die of a preventable disease. Bitch, no. <sighs> well, we let's. Hmm? A mutual friend sent this who hasn't seen RDA in at least 10 years, was like, if this isn't on RDA next week, I don't know why it wouldn't be. <laughs> this? This exact article. Oh. Yeah. They should be watching, <laughs> goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> Fucker. All right. Um, <laughs> this next one is, is so purely Florida. We, we qu Quite often on the show, I say, one of the lessons we learn here is that at any moment, on any day in anyone's life, suddenly fucking naked. It's true. It you don't know. It could happen anywhere, anywhere. That's just one of the weird aspects of reality we have to contend with. Some people are born into nakedness. Some people have nakedness thrust upon them. <laughs> Actually, Tara, I, I hope everyone is born naked. If you're not born naked, something's a little off. I, I guess if you yeah. pop out of the vagina in a onesie, something's weird. <laughs> but this one is, 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 is very special because naked woman drove golf cart through armed standoff in Dunedin. Deputies in Pinellas County had plenty on their hands Sunday morning while they tried to defuse a standoff with an armed teenager on a rooftop. Very serious. Not cool. According to the arrest affidavit, a naked woman who had nothing to do with the situation made things even harder when she decided to drive a golf cart into the crime scene. Sheriff's office said it set up a perimeter outside the home on Michigan Boulevard after 18 year old uh, Miles Abbott, Abbott fled deputies, climbed on a roof and pointed a gun at him, started a standoff that would last six hours. According to the affidavit, 28-year-old Jessica Elizabeth Smith of Boston, Massachusetts, 
drove a golf cart by several marked sheriff's office vehicles vehicles that were at the scene, ignored a deputy's commands to leave as she approached the house where the armed teenager was on the roof. After David said her actions and inability to follow directions made multiple deputies at risk for potentially getting shot at. The defendant had a distinct odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from her person and was completely nude. Did they know each other? <laughs> Apparently not. Just like, is this the Hotel California Gambit from Shang-Chi? <laughs> That's not a major spoiler if you haven't seen the movie yet. It's just a distraction thing. Was this like, you know what? They're going to arrest Mason. I better take off all my clothes and get in a golf cart. And that would make sense, except no. It appears she's a complete stranger. Okay. Well, girl power, I guess. What? Why did this? Why? Because can you just imagine you're in the middle of this tense fucking standoff? There's a kid with a gun on the fucking roof. You don't know the fuck you're going to fucking deal with this. Fuck it. What the fuck? Is that lady naked? I will say, however, everybody in that area looked. Even the kid with the gun looked. He's 18. And all you needed was like one cop really on top of it who could have ended the whole thing right there. <laughs> like, nobody's paying attention. Taser. <laughs> <laughs> not that you know i think people should be randomly tasered but if you're in a six-hour standoff and the opportunity arises i kind of think you should be we're gonna bounce over to indiana for this one and i you know i i kind of feel this one in, in my bones in a way i i think we all kind of feel this one a little bit <laughs> just the headline alone is like yeah, that, that seems reasonable. Why is it on the show? Man kept calling 911 to report he was tired. <laughs> Indiana man who repeatedly called 911 to inform police operators he was tired will spend the next two months resting up in county jail. Daniel Schroeder, 61, was arrested Tuesday night at his Evansville's ho Evansville home in connection with a quartet of calls placed that evening at the emergency police line. The caller kept calling in to state that he was tired. Schroeder's calls about weariness came a day after he pled guilty to prior misuse of the 911 system. In the earlier case, he copped calling police to report that he was upset a female relative was, quote, not following his rules. <coughs> the judge ordered Schroeder to serve six months in jail, but imposed a suspended uh, sentence on the condition he does not call 911 unless it is an emergency. Schroeder violated that agreement the following day. <laughs> so. Sure, he understands what the word emergency means. <laughs> <laughs> like, a definition might be helpful. Maybe tattoo it on his forearm. <laughs> I just said, it, it's, it, the, they don't fuck with 911. Okay, we'll put you in jail if you do. Okay. 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 Very next day. Hey, I want to fucking tired. It's an emergency. I'm I tired. I can't say that I do really sympathize with this because who wants to talk on the phone that much anymore? <laughs> like I have to, I had to make an eye doctor appointment and I put, I'm on my last pair of contact lenses right now. I'm probably doing the show in glasses last week, next week, because I'm irresponsible because I didn't want to call and make a fucking appointment and yeah. have to talk to a human. Four times? That Nine sounds one. stressful. 911, what's your emergency? I am lit tired. <laughs> <laughs> the kids aren't going to get that one. Oh, God, I know. That, that's, that's, a, that's a vintage meme right there. Um, Schroeder's rap sheet includes four convictions for driving while intoxicated, as well as convictions for narcotics and leaving the scene of an accident. He's led a life. Sounds like a really responsible guy. I know. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Nine. Just fucking. Oh my. All right. 
we're getting there. It's getting worse. This next one is one of those stories where you have to, to, to it, it's a wait a minute because it implies some shit that when you think about it, gets really goddamn disturbing. Uh, it's from Florida. That's no rock. Air Force bomb squad call after landmines found on Florida beach. Yep. Budge full of junk. <laughs> A section of Florida Beach was evacuated Thursday after residents found landmines, plural, in the area. Indian River County, uh, Indian River County Sheriff's Office said residents found a mine against a seawall. If he said a second device was brought back by roadway by one of the residents. Um, some residents in the area were evacuated as precaution as the uh, St. Lucie Bomb Squad and Air Force Bomb Squad was called out to evacuate. Air Force Bob Squad removed both landmines. They were taken to base. No injuries. Blah, blah, blah. No details were given as to where the mines came from. Yeah, like who is burying that, landmines in Florida? See, in some parts of the world, we are terrible people, and we have left landmines in other countries. Vietnam is just full of the damn things, and people still step on them and die. We've done in Korea, same fucking problem. That makes, that's terrible, it's horrible, but it makes sense. No one has ever invaded Florida. At least no one with landmine technology. Like, I know we're all pretty fucking fed up with Florida. <laughs> but I don't think this is the answer. And these are old landmines, is the other thing. Look at these damn things. They're, they have been there. For, so someone, at some point in the past went out and mined a beach in Florida and it's just been there all these fucking years. What? Why? What the? That's deeply upsetting. There is. A and they found two. <laughs> that doesn't mean that's all there are. No. If there are two landmines, there's probably more landmines because that's how landmines work. There might not be. Is it like is that like the rule with roaches where if you see one, there's ten? Yeah, pretty much. If there's if there's a landmine, you act like there's a hundred landmines. Because that that's that stop fuck yeah, fuck. Um so what the fuck happened here? It's I love how the story is just like, no one's hurt, no no details. We just found landmines, it's a thing. Y'all are oh. shell shocked in Florida. I know it's probably not the not the Florida appropriate. Florida on a fucking Wednesday, man. What is it? PTSD. And I, you guys are just inured to this shit. You're 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 so fucking used to it. Oh, there's landmines. Okay. What? Yeah, I wonder if that's what it's like. Like, are you just constantly living in some weird mashup of a David Lynch movie and a Pauly Shore movie to the point where you're completely desensitized? <laughs> Like you could you could walk by two Disney characters doing unspeakable porn in the street and just be like, Meh. must be a new attraction there. I don't no, know. People act like uh, uh, people, New Yorkers have seen everything. No, no, no. Floridians, fucking Floridians, man. OK, here's this is why this this next story just this bleeds in one into the other. The Florida Air Force sent out the bomb squad to deal with that, right? Our next story, I shit you fucking not. Eaglin Air Force Base, airmen made bomb threat to dining facility. Okaloosa County, Florida, Eaglin Air Force Base allegedly received a, or is it Eglin? Eaglin? It seems like Eaglin. Anyway, received a bomb threat from an airman on Sunday. According to the base the Air Force are the terrorists of the military. <laughs> I didn't say it. Yeah, send your complaints to me. I'm Army. Fuck the Air Force. <laughs> According to the base <laughs> spokeswoman, Jasmine Porterfield, the airman who allegedly texted the threat targeting the Breeze Dining Facility assigned to the 96th Test Wing. So he's a test pilot. Oh, no. 
Why? Airman's not been named at this time. It's unclear if charges will be filed. According to the base, the airman sent a text to a third party threatening to blow up the breeze. The person then notified military officials who responded to the breeze around 8 p.m. It doesn't say why. It, it does not. Can the food really be that bad? <clears throat> How no. can you be? It, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're in the Air Force, you have to be even in low level. You, you're an officer, right? Airman, that's an officer. Air, yeah, no, airmen's that's that's like a low level enlisted. Okay, so that's enlisted. All right. Yeah. Well then, and no, the Air Force does not have bad food. <laughs> we used to sneak onto the Air Force PX to get the good shit. <laughs> I do want to point out if you look at the picture, they sell smoothies. They they spell the word smoothies S M U U T H I E S. So now I'm on that dude's side. <laughs> Cause that makes me angry. And now I see his point. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Delicious smoothies. <laughs> but how the fuck? You get to assign it to a test wing, and you think, "Yeah, bomb threat is a good plan." To your own cafeteria. To your own. It's not even like a tactic. You're not even in a combat situation. You're bomb threading your own calf of fucking Deria. Like you're sabotaging your own lunch. They're not. They, they're not going to give you extra lunch for this. You can. Not buy the smoothies. <laughs> I love how that's what you focus on. Out of this entire it, story, it's, it's like it's the closest thing. The way that can, the shot is lined up, so it's just itching my spine. At some point, when your stomach feels good, I'll tell you about army smoothies. I don't want to know. <laughs> I just I'll, probably I'll, fucking napalm and semen. <laughs> I, <laughs> out wow. of all the aspects of this story all the things happening you're like oh the smoothies thing yeah that's just that's what you zero in on that's your instinct does this bother you not as much as the airman calling it a bomb threat tara <laughs> i mean maybe i'm a little desensitized after a decade of this but bad spelling there's oh, no excuse for that i hope you're not desensitized to the last story this is this is the cringer this is the brace y'all selves. Anyone who has a urethra, brace yourself. Oh, well, I'm fine. No, no thank you. Um, I had a cloaca installed a few years ago. <laughs> I'm good. <sighs> okay. I'm going to say it, and there are guys who get pissed about it, but it's true. You measure it. If you've got one, <clears throat> You've measured it. Got you've gotten a ruler, some point or another. Yeah, it's happened. <laughs> you've measured it, okay? Okay. But there's measuring it, and then there's oh my fucking god! Teen gets USB cable stuck in penis. In oh, backfired attempt to measure length. I, I can't make sense of that. A UK teen had to undergo emergency surgery as an attempt to measure his manhood resulted in him getting a USB cable lodged in his urethra. I'm a little disappointed you didn't read the first line. He backed up his hard drive and his <laughs> <laughs> Balak fiasco repeatedly began after an unnamed 15 year old boy was quote triggered by sexual curiosity and inserted a USB wire into his urethra this is from a medical journal ure urology case record reports this experiment backfired when the cable became lodged in the curious teen scrotum like an electronic catheter despite attempts the good to news is he can charge his phone anywhere <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, I, this is act. This is a picture. Apparently, this is a picture from the case reports. That's that's not Photoshop. That's uh. Now, the USB cord became tangled so terribly that both ends were left hanging out of his wired willy. See, it's not my fault. Every single week, I have to untangle my headphones. <laughs> and he's like, what do you do to them? <laughs> Apparently, I could shove them inside my body and the same thing would happen. <laughs> it's a design flaw. You can shove it up a one-way tube and they'll find a way to tangle. <laughs> Call Tim Cook. <laughs> the first thing about this is, okay, when we say measure it from the base, oh, honey, this is not what they mean. I don't know, because how are you going to know? Right? When to stop pushing. Because Apparently he, like, he listen, fellas, the inside part doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're measuring... <laughs> Anything that's on the inside doesn't count towards your total. Oh my god. So how do you know when to stop? I Omega says yet another reason to switch to Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to remind you though that this is how they t they they test the depth of wounds. <clears throat> With USB when, cables? When I had the hole in no, when I had the <laughs> hole in my leg, the way they measured how deep the wound was, was they took a wooden stick and they stuck it in and then they measured the blood on the stick. Oh, well, they'd be measuring the blood on something there. Maybe that's the method he was going for. This is not how a dip but you stick generally works. Don't want, you generally don't want blood coming out of there, though. No. Oh. Subsequent x-rays revealed that it was a veritable Gordian knot of USB wire inside the teenager. <sighs> which required surgeons to make an incision in the region between his genitals and anus to yank it out. Oh, they had, they, they had to, they had to give him an epiostomy. Only women usually get that. They pulled they had to cut his teeth open. They pulled the spooled end through the hole first, cutting it free. From the rest of the wire before removing the remaining bits, literally Did pulling the block. I don't, I don't want to see it. You should look at the x-ray, but look at it, oh, baby, but look at it. You know, I'm getting a catheter in like two and a half <laughs> weeks, right? I had not thought of that. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. It's probably not going to look like that. They probably knew what they're doing. God, I hope so. Now I'm going to have nightmares. But yeah, so that's the thing they do to women in childbirth. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't squeeze your kid's giant cranium out, <laughs> they just turn your, three, your two holes into one and then fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> That's not usually a, a a pleasure men get to experience. So congratulations. Son. If you get a dick, they don't they don't normally have to. My God, That's no. just oh my God. If you have and a also dick think about think about the condition most of your cables are in. Oh. You don't keep them in a sterile environment. No, I got all my cables in a fucking pile behind my monitor that Peggy sleeps on. <laughs> He shoved that all up in his dick. I, if you have a penis, now I, I, I know uteruses are the most high maintenance of, of the two sex organs. I, yes. But the penis is the one that's just, it's the most troublesome. <laughs> in so many ways. It's just, it's in the way all the fucking time. It's, <laughs> if, you, if it encounters even the least bit of resistance unexpectedly, Pain just radiates the whole fucking thing. <laughs> you would think just that it's like it's like a a pinball bumper you don't want to fucking touch. You right? think with from what I understand the way they work, you would want <clears throat> to avoid doing unnecessary things to them. Yeah. Just I I guess the first thing we learned this week is yes, yes, it's true. Everyone measures it. Don't lie. It's true. However, use a ruler. Yeah. If you're and worried about... Externally. Yes, yes. If, if you're worried about someone else having to use the ruler layer, 
just go and buy one specific. It's like a buck. Get yourself your own special penis ruler. Don't I, fucking and, and only use it externally. I have never looked at my dick in any sense and gone. I want to shove something in there. Never <laughs> anything. What the fuck? I mean, I've looked at other people's dicks and thought that, but they deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> We've learned. We don't put things like that on the Internet because that's evidence. Oh, that's right. We've Sorry. learned that the uh, the armed forces um, are not immune from bomb bomb threats from their own people. What the fuck? What the fuck? What yeah, the f- I don't. I, I would love to hear the motive on that one. We've learned you will find landmines in places there shouldn't be landmines. That for no logical reason should there be landmines. So that's a new thing you have to worry about in your life if you didn't have enough anxiety already. Thank God, because I was running low. Like I already the beach is kind of a little squicky for me in some ways. Cause yeah. now I have to worry about just wandering around. Maybe I'll blow up. Um, we've learned that 911, yes, we are, it is a mood for, for the 21st century being tired, but it's not an emergency. It's just a state of being. Yeah. Just we're, we're all there, babe. Get used to it. It's not going to We're Everyone is even like the four year olds are tired. They don't even know why they're fucking tired. We've learned at any point in any situation for no good reason, suddenly there will be naked people. The least likely situation you could possibly think of and naked. So here's a question. Mm. If you're in Florida, Mm. would you rather encounter random naked people or random landmines? Shit, I'm going to have to think about that one. I mean, I'm definitely going naked people because they're far less likely to blow you up. Am I going to have to look the naked person in the eye? Yes. Landmine. (laughs) (laughs) And finally this week we've learned If you have to put on blackface, oh, honey, you're not oppressed. If, if, if you, if you have to make yourself look like a people who have been and still are historically oppressed, you ain't oppressed. You are, in fact, holy shit, pause, hold the, stop the presses. You're the oppressor. It's just, it's, it's just a shot. They and just want you to not give their kids a respiratory virus. We, we have a lot of social inequ- inequity and inequality we have to address. We have systemic problems. We have fucking issues. But one of the first steps in maybe doing your part to try to help just a little fucking bit. No blackface. Just, it's a little thing you can do. It's easy. You know how you do it? You don't put on blackface. Easiest things you can do. Because all you have to do is nothing. I got up this morning. I didn't put on blackface. Tomorrow, I'm going to get up and not put on blackface. I'm doing my part. Also, the iodide, I don't think we're going to have to deal with her for very long. Because those are not good. Well, they're drinking it now, too. Yeah. We've moved on from horse dewormer to just straight up shotgunning iodine. Because Darwin was wrong. (laughs) 